just arrived in Mandal, the very southernmost town in Norway, first foot on Norwegian soil, and as you can see, it's snowing. This is the eighth day since we left Falmouth, and here we are in Norway, the start of our adventure. When God created the planet, I think that when he made Norway, he had boat owners in mind. Because other than a few exposed stretches, most of the coast is protected by a screen of islands, rocks and fjords, creating what Norwegians call the inner lead. And in these waters, no matter what the outside ocean may be doing, the inner lead provides sheltered, safe and pleasant boating conditions almost all year round. When we were planning our adventure to the Lofotens, a chain of islands way north of the Arctic Circle, the security offered by the inner lead was a major deciding factor to make the voyage. And in our planning, there were certain special places that we wanted to visit. For those of us brought up on the shipping forecast, where I'm standing now has almost mythical connotations, Utsira. We'd hear it every day, North Utsira, South Utsira those sea areas off Norway. What I hadn't realised is that both North Utsira and South Utsira are in fact both tiny, tiny little harbours on one tiny island less than a mile long and that's where I'm standing now. Oh, we've just arrived on the island of Silda and uh, the further north we go, the colder it's getting. You can probably see behind me the, the snow on the mountains and you can also see behind me that apart from Sessien in the harbour, there's absolutely no other visiting boats at all. This isn't early season, this is before the season even kicks off. And the further north we go, the crazier I think we are doing this so early in the year. It's late April, but here in Norway, in northern Norway, that still is not boating season. We stopped here tonight. We've been rolling for about eight hours today, and we've been going through the fjords. Phenomenal. The difference in scenery, wherever you go, is just it's mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. We've stopped here because it's about four o'clock in the afternoon, and ahead of us is a headland called Stat. And Stat is one of the most notorious Norwegian headlands. I was talking to a customs officer in Bergen, which is about 100 miles south of here, and when I said where we were going, first thing he said is, oh, you're going around Stat, are you? It's that sort of place that gives everyone a feeling of unease. We did go out there a few minutes ago and have a look, and it was lumpy. There was a, a lumpy swell running in, and the idea of running 10 to 15 miles around this headland with a bit of a breeze, a swell, and what seemed to be a squall, a rain shower coming in, we decided to be sensible and come into harbour for the night. The following morning, Stat caused us no problems. But on the way back south, it was a very different story. The further round the headland, and the more we were committed, the bigger and more confused the swell became. Backwash off the sheer headland and wind funnelling around it. 
combined with a fast running tide, creating the most hideous conditions I've ever encountered. On the north side, we'd been sheltered from both sea and wind. The further we crept around, the more we became exposed. Times we were down to just two knots, looking at green waves breaking over the bows, falling into pits created by them. As I watched a big commercial oil rig supply boat heading towards us, running with the seas, yet still being tossed around, I realized just how small Sessien was to be heading into these seas. It was one of the moments of greatest relief that I can remember when we eventually rounded the headland and gradually Stat released us from its terrifying grip. But that encounter with Stat was on the way home. Heading north round Stat, the main part of the adventure was still ahead. 